oh my god the sun is dumb bright right now like it's gonna be facing in the direction see i'm gonna have to leave earlier well the time is about to change anyways so i'm just thinking how bright this sun is look at how bright the sun is behind me crazy and i'm gonna be facing it in a second what's up y'all it's me erica this is gonna be your real housewives of potomac reunion part two review and then i guess on the way back we'll review married to medicine i don't know what's going on um so everybody had a good weekend i hope everybody had a wonderful weekend i don't think anything happened out of the ordinary except for candace owens saying that white supremacy wasn't a threat to black people and something about the black family she was saying promoting the black family and also saying something about black on black crime like why <laughs> candace owens is a fool i keep trying to tell y'all she's a fool um i don't i ha there has to be another black conservative person who has her views but are probably just more I don't know well round I'm sure there's other black women who are conservatives who are smarter than Candace Owens who can actually get up there and have a real conversation don't get in front of Congress I mean like what are you doing like are you seriously sitting up there saying these things you can't and why is she being called I mean I guess anybody go but why is she being called on like whatever girl it's like have you and y'all say the T.I. And, and Candace Owens ain't no difference it's like having T.I. up there can you imagine oh my god girl no no Mm -mm. <laughs> when Azalea Banks said that T.I. sound like he was educated by Freedman's Bureau <laughs> baby I has stuck in my head forever that dude is blowing big smoke out his car Anyway, so we're talking about the Real Housewives of Potomac Reunion, part two. Um, I should have been talking about it while I was talking about fucking Candace Owens, because now I'm going to be in the face of the sun. Okay, so let's start. So they walk in, they left off where they, they start off where they left off. Michael's up there looking like a predator, you know, watching you know men on a playground that's what he looked like like what are you why are you standing up over there like that that was so creepy why would they tell him to go up there no one it doesn't even look like anybody should have been up there like why are you up here on this scaffolding looking like looking over at the people why are you up here that was so dumb to me i was like why is he up there like that looming like that shit was so gross and then for them to look up and then Andy's like, well, Michael's up there. What the fuck is he doing up up there in the first place? That's what I want to know. Why the fuck is he on some second level looking down at? There's no, there's no reason for him to be that high. Wait, is there a dressing room up there? I mean, what the fuck? Why is he up there? That, that didn't even make sense to me. I was like, that's gross. That looks real creepy, and I don't know why they would do that. Anyway, uh, Monique and Candace, they got on them. We still don't know what the fuck happened with them. I don't know. What do y'all think happened between Candace and, um, let me say, ignore. That's what I want to say. What do you guys think happened with Candace and Monique? Because I can't see, I think the main thing for Candace was all of a sudden, this girl did this stuff to you. Ashley did all this stuff to you, said all this shit about you to the point where you know your husband said something like you know um people were saying things to her about her having a miscarriage because she was drinking or she was an alcoholic and i think that's what candace is like mad about but monique's stance is like well i've forgiven her and because i've forgiven her i'm not gonna keep bringing it up i truly forgive her and so I'm moving past it. And I think that K 
Candace can't understand how maybe to forgive people yet. Maybe she doesn't understand because that's how Monique is is framing it. Like, oh, I I guess people don't I guess people don't forgive, and it's like she has a point. You know, like okay, well I'm gonna forgive this girl, and you know, has she done anything since then? No. Has Ashley done anything to Monique? Because I guess Monique was the only one in her side on her side, or. Monique does have footage of what went on in that basement and Ashley is trying to be, you know, super nice to her and trying to be cool. So I don't know. I don't know, mate. We don't know what, why, I don't know why they're like, I don't, I don't know. Like she still didn't let the girl in her house. So maybe she's just trying to see, you know, where Ashley is. I don't know. I mean, she had a point. But maybe Candace just feels like I don't get it because this girl has been an evil person. And then on top of the drinking thing, exactly, it's exactly what she was criticizing you for. It's exactly the thing. And I guess maybe Monique says, I know how it feels for someone to say something about you drinking and you trying to have a baby because you did it and you should know how it feels. And so now Ashley is taking on this stance like she's such a victim. I was just like, whatever. Um, maybe that's what it is, I guess. Um, so why did Monique show the text messages to Candace? What were you trying to do? You were trying to, once again, I keep telling y'all through the whole season, Monique has this thing about herself where she feels like she's not as messy as the rest of the women. It is a theme with her. And I don't know why no one else sees it she does it in the in the presence of her husband and i see she's doing it now maybe she said well she did say because she was pregnant that she didn't want to be involved in any drama but it does not mean that you are less messy you were just being conscious of your current medical state so you want to make sure that you're taking care of your baby and not being as messy as you normally would but because monique that shit was messy as fuck. There is no reason for you to have proven to Candace's point. There is no reason for you to befriend Ashley by talking about me. Like, why am I the topic of the conversation when you're trying to forge this new found friendship with Ashley? Why am I the topic of the conversation? Why do you have to feel like you're separating yourself from me? Like, I understand what Candace was saying. Like, I, everybody has points to their little arguments and to what how they're approaching these different situations. I just want to know how, how Ashley seems to be getting out of all of this shit. Like, I'm, I'm glad that they're... I, first of all, I'm glad that Karen is on Giselle's ass. I'm glad she's on her ass. She got something to say to her every single time she says something. But we, we still don't know the motivation behind showing... Ashley those text messages only for me to be feel like you were trying to separate yourself like I don't have nothing to do with that but in fact you were you were talking shit and she's gonna say karma well I did say karma comes back to people and that's just a fact and that's just real so what are you saying I need for you to elaborate Monique are you saying that they are getting what what is coming to them like say that don't try to be like, oh, well, karma is a fact. No, explain yourself. That's why I don't know, like, um, somebody else, I felt like Andy wasn't really, like, into it. Like, I don't feel like he's trying to keep them from arguing. He hasn't told anybody to be quiet. Like, they're arguing and Andy's just sitting there like, okay. I don't, I, I haven't seen him try to be like, okay, be quiet or let somebody else talk or whatever. But I, I don't know. I don't know what's going on with Andy. Anyway, so Monique and Candace are going back and forth, I guess, about who is ghetto. And Candace says that she was raised in a country club community. Baby, she does not want to lose that little princess. She does not want to lose that theme that she has going on with her. She's the little, rich, spoiled brat princess. Like, Candace, you are a trip. I was like, Candace, I was raised in a country club community. I said, come on, bitch. <laughs> I'm what she said. I'm what she said. They were hood. They were saying not ghetto. They were saying hood. They were using hood. Candace Monique says, I'm proud to be hood or something like that. Okay, good. 
what did that have anything to do with nobody was saying they weren't proud of, it, of where they came from Candace was just letting you know she didn't come from whatever it is you came from she came from a country club community <laughs> I say Candace is a trip I can't help it because I came from a country club community <laughs> bitch the Amistad joke, it did land. It did. Nobody understands your jokes, Monique, uh, as, uh, because you have to. If you have to explain the joke, then it, it's not a good joke. If you have to explain it, it was messy for Candace to take that back to Giselle because she knows Giselle doesn't like Monique. The same way, <clears throat> the same way Monique is going to Ashley talking about Candace. She knows she don't like Candace. Y'all are not doing anything that's different. Like that's why I keep saying like. Monique, you're not different from any of the other women, even though you want to make it seem like you are. And I, I get it because you're trying to move around, you know, in your in your society, in reality, in your little groups out there where you are. So you want to have an image about yourself. Okay, great. Even still, the still your your messiness seeps through even while you were pregnant so as, as much as you try to stay out of the mess you got involved in some mess too luckily the cameras caught you talking about Michael <clears throat> and Ashley because everybody was talking about Michael everybody was how could you not be on a show with a girl who was as nasty as nasty as intrusive as rude as uncouth as Ashley Darby who has talked about every single person on that damn stage and now the tables flip on her where her husband is now embroiled in some sexual assault, sexual misconduct on the on the internet allegedly showing on Jack or Grinder whatever the fuck touching other producers, touching another husband's dick our butt and 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 then you not have anything to say about it monique shut up just shut up it doesn't even there's nobody believes you i didn't have anything to say yes you did you did everybody has something to say and i don't know maybe that's another reason why candace has an issue with you because you acting like you don't have nothing to do with it and why and why are you so trying to be candace not um ashley's friend <clears throat> Because there's one thing to forgive a person. It's another thing to auto automatically be buddy-buddy, good Judy's to the point where you're like defending them and also trying to separate yourself from the bullshit. Like, if you said something, be honest about it. That's, that, I would, that's the problem that I see that I would have because that was crazy. Um, all the bickering that they were doing was really stupid. Um, Monique and Ashley's relationship does not make sense. Um, just because of the past you can like I said you can forgive somebody but to be to the point where you're like oh I don't have anything to do with that I've never said anything about you and your husband girl stop lying you did and you did and you did Giselle and Monique situation I wish somebody would just come out and just say it that she has a problem from the beginning when Monique corrected her when Giselle was trying to see how if she was going to be able to bully Monique how if she was going to test her to see she told her she had four homes she since then ever since then she got a problem with her since then she has a problem with her she's not she feels like like I was glad that Monique said to Giselle do you lack that much self-awareness to where you feel like it was okay for you to just walk into this woman's house and to immediately confront me? Like, not only do you owe Robin an apology, but you owe me an apology because if you really were concerned about whether or not I liked you or you liked me, you would not have approached it in that way. And that I'm glad Monique told Giselle that because, bitch, how old are you? You damn near 50 years old, oh, almost 50, and you still are not aware of the fact that you walked into somebody's house like it's all about me like a three-year-old child, like a three-year-old. Like your maturity level, What what's going on with you, lady? And you raising girls, like are you raising them to be catty and bitchy like that too? Like, and you can't even raise, because that's just society and that's how some women decide to relate to other women in that sorority type of I'm better than you type of way like that 
you got to get out of that, Giselle. You cannot be that dumb. Like, you just can't be that dumb. And that's why, that's why Karen's like, you know, going after Giselle. We see you for who you are. We see you for who you are. You ain't shit. And that's what it is. You really ain't shit at the end of the day, Giselle. You not shit and we see you. So you got a problem with that. I wish you would stop tailgating me, please. In your truck. Um, what else happened after that? Um, Robin and Juan, they get on them, child. I do not believe that two little boys are asking you when you are going to get married. I do not believe, I think Andy was trying to, he asked the question to me to, to, to just kind of demonstrate how ridiculous it sounded that your sons are on Google nine and 10 years old and they're looking up their parents. Maybe so, cause there's cameras around. Maybe mommy and daddy are famous, but your father was a basketball player. You have to know that. Your mom is on the show. So you see that they are, that is what comes up in your search that Juan Dixon and Robin Dixon are divorced. <clears throat> Did they put the timeline together and say, mommy, you were divorced when I was three years old. Why didn't you tell me then? Like, girl, shut up. Like, that's how ridiculous it is, Robin, that you want us to believe that the boys are asking you about when and you when are you and daddy going to get married? Girl, just say that you want to marry Juan, Juan, and say that you are succumbing to the pressures of your girlfriend who does not have a man who is dating her ex-man who also put her through the same bullshit you and Juan are going is that why she understands girl I'm like Robin shut your ass up and I'm glad Karen said why are you so worried about Robin to Giselle worry about you and your ability to keep a man I said come on <laughs> worry about that why are you so worried about Giselle or Robin and Juan like I don't understand what is that about what is that? And, and if Juan really loves her, he needs to put a ring on it. What? Is that what it is? That's what it's broiled down to. If somebody really loves you, they have to buy you a piece of depreciating jewelry to show you how much they love you. Giselle, you sound stupid. And Robin, don't, if you are fine with being in that type of relationship with your husband or with your child's father, with your partner, because you guys are partners. You're not, you haven't created a partnership through marriage, through the state. You guys are partnering, co-parenting, whatever the fuck. If you are okay with that, why are you letting this dumb girl, like you guys are in college or something. Why are you letting Giselle say these things like, and then I don't want to think that Robin is that, like, I don't want to think that she's that goofy that she can't make her own decision that she's really actually a grown woman succumbing to societal pressures that you have to be married to this man in order for him to prove that he loves you two things that are just conditional go away come and go away you want something like that bleeding like that to be a demonstration of how much you care about me girl you don't have to do it if you do not want to and nothing is wrong with you if you don't want to do that that's like the thing like this idea that something is wrong that with the, it's something nothing is wrong with robin if robin is okay with having this relationship with juan in the way that she's having it if she if that makes her happy that is her just like the shit went Fantasia if that's what makes her happy and she is not being abused or whatever let that girl do it how, however crazy it sounds to anybody let that girl do what she gonna do let her do it and let her learn and let her learn from it because everything is not for everybody even though everybody makes it seem like it is for everybody and that's what everybody is supposed to do that is not what everybody is supposed to do and nothing is wrong if you don't want to do that and that's why I'm like Robin, either you going to use it, stop using kids as an excuse because that's whack. The tattoo's whack. Everything is just whack all the way around. And it's like 
you're forcing something that to me you don't even look like you're enthusiastic about it. it's very ugh, like I mean I guess he's gonna have to ask me first girl shut up you don't even want that just say look I'm fine with this that's all you gotta do that's all you gotta do Robin I'm fine with this y'all not gonna pressure me into doing this shit again and then us getting a divorce again and going through the just do what it and if you ever need to leave or you need to go and he wants to, wants to go he can go you don't have to be married you can go you can leave you can go and just go you don't have to be married now you want to go now you got to go through all these lawyers and shit come on that's stupid to me that is just dumb to me i'm like why is this girl i feel like she's I don't know. I don't know. I feel like it's a, some kind of pressure that like that's going on. But anyways, she told Karen, did y'all catch Karen telling Giselle, you know, you happier when you with a man and Giselle's like, a man does not define me, girl. Shut your ass up. You are in the arms of the man who emotionally abused you. So you forgiven. Okay. So you forgiven Jamal, but can you don't Y'all, okay, so can we understand? She's forgiven Jamal to the point where she's now sitting in front rows of concerts of comedy shows with him. You want you want Robin to get married. You go go marry Jamal. Like worry about you. Just like Karen told her. You so worried about Robin. You need to worry about since you're happier with a man. I said Karen is getting Giselle together. Stop worrying about Robin and get you a man. That's what she told her. All he got to do is ask me, shut up, Robin. You sound stupid. Giselle said a man does not define her, honey. Um, to me, I feel like you're, that's, you're, it's a contradictory statement because you are really with your, with your ex-husband who embarrassed you. And what was this, 12 years ago? Not to say she doesn't have to forgive him, but you're going to date him again? Like as if he's changed the way that he relates to women in 12 years? Oh, okay. An adult man? Oh, okay. Okay, Giselle. And when you looking stupid again, I guess that's going to be your storyline next season for Housewives. I guess. I guess. Um... She says to Karen she wants to get back to being a girlfriend, doing the girlfriend. Karen does not trust Giselle. She does, does not have to trust Giselle. Giselle has given her enough reason to not trust her and to very much keep it a frenemy situation. I'm fine, you know, battling you is basically what Karen said. I have no problem with it. I can go with the best of you. Can We can get along. We can be cordial. We're not going to be friends. And that's just basically, to me, the energy that I got from Karen. She's not trying to be cool with Giselle. I think for the sake of being a joke, trying to say that, like Giselle keeps saying that she's trying to make everything a joke. The thing about Ray and his finances, she's trying to make a joke out of it. Um, Ashley and her husband and him <clears throat> physically violating people without their consent she's trying to make a joke out of it why are you trying to make jokes out of things why do you feel like that is your role in this show Giselle like I'm like trying to figure this lady out like what are you doing what are, what's going on with every every Hugh Beauty what's going on with that and why hasn't Andy brought that up like what's going on somebody said they saw it on the clearance rack in um in Target I don't know I don't know I don't know um they get on Michael and Ashley. Now, I still want to know, and why doesn't anyone ask, why did Michael say that he may have said some things that he regrets? And, and, and I don't know why Ashley, I don't know why no one could look at Ashley and tell that she knows that Michael likes these kind of things. Because one, or likes to do these kind of things or is into other men or whatever because when they show the clip you can't be that drunk to not see that your husband has extended his hand under underneath some other man's ass you're not that drunk and out of it or delusional on tape then all of these things where he says he's on camera 
saying things to people and then saying I may have said something I, I regret and Ashley saying he didn't say anything so then why would he say I may have said some things that I regret if he didn't say anything and she's so adamant about it and then don't think that she's delusional that bitch is a scam artist she is scamming y'all like Ashley knows exactly what the fuck Michael is into she knows what it is she knows what it is and that's what it is here I'm 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 I'll take care of you and your mama I'm about this lifestyle but I'm in business and I need to make it seem like I'm in a hetero relationship all of a sudden now he wants a baby like come on now like uh-uh whatever that shit is crazy and Ashley don't believe that act that Ashley got like like she does she like she truly does not believe he said anything that's an act she's phony that's fake that shit is fake because Michael was talking the way that what's her name made it seem <clears throat> Robin because we knew he was talking about Juan's penis the way that it may seem was, and even Robin had a good point, if we both were making the story up, if we decided let's make the story up, why wouldn't we have the same story? I was like, that's why I know Robin is not dumb. Like, bitch, if, if we were making this story up, we would have heard the exact same thing. Um, what's his name heard? Sausage. What's his name? Chris. You heard penis. So Michael doesn't talk like that. Michael would say penis or dick. I would suck Juan's dick. Whatever the whatever the whatever the word choice was, they both heard something. And if they were making it up together, the story would be the same. <laughs> no one would say, "Well, let's act like you heard something different and I heard something different," so that they could say that we're making it up. Like, girl, <laughs> you gotta think. You gotta think. But Ashley's a little scam artist acting like she just doesn't understand but anyway so they said um at, they trying to figure out you know what who said what candace is rolling her eyes they really I, I like i really want somebody to ask why is it that he said he he may have said some things if, that he that he regretted if he didn't say anything ashley like that's like the main question. What is he talking about then? Are you are you gonna are you gonna act like you don't remember that he said that, even though we hear it? Like, come on, you are a scam artist. You are a scam artist. And like Robin told her, since you went hard on everybody else, I figure it was you could take it. Like I said, Robin is not a dummy. That's why I keep trying to tell y'all she's not dumb, and I would hate to act like she's dumb enough to let somebody put her into a into a situation that she truly does not want to be in she doesn't seem enthusiastic about even being with Juan like it's regular like we are a regular couple this is what we want to do like if y'all don't understand that and somehow feel like every single woman wants to be married to somebody like that is not every woman's thing that's not the thing it is not some women believe that and then they try it and they see like oh no this is not the shit i want to do at all like i'm fine doing this and just like if, if people can understand where fantasia is coming from and how she approaches her marriage let this lady approach her partnership the same way don't believe that every single woman wants to be married and i'm like why are you using these kids as an excuse if you want to be married to the nigga say you want to be married to the, the, the nigga but act like you happy about it like you don't seem enthusiastic about it i don't know if that's just me looking at robin i'm thinking in my head like you're really okay with it but it seems like you're really like oh this these people are really trying to pressure me into getting married to this man again when i'm cool with our situation i don't even think the, the did anybody see the tattoos they didn't even ask them let's see these tattoos and why get them on the inside of the finger like it's just like if somebody really wanted an outward expression you're going to get a tattoo and just like um robin or giselle said robin was talking about getting a family crest and all this other stuff robin is robin and robin is not the tattoo type of woman or she would have been had tattoos like i don't know i don't know 
I'm just thinking too much about it because it doesn't make sense to me. I, I'm, there's a, different things that Robin says throughout the reunion that had, she made very good points. And, but still in this situation, I guess she could be dumb here and smart here. And I guess that's how it goes, but whatever. Um, so what happened after that? Robin tells Ashley, you done all of this shit to everybody else. I don't understand how come all of a sudden you can't take it. Like I thought you would have been able to take it since you went, put everybody else through hell. Now it's your turn to go through hell. And I don't understand why nobody believes that. Like the way that you are with people in your life, no matter how long it takes, one day you are going to experience the hell that you put somebody else through. Trust and believe that. That's why you, when you are, are interacting with people, you try to do the best by them until they give you permission not to. And that's it. Because guess what's going to happen? Everything, all of the horrors that you brought into somebody's life, them horrors are going to come visit you. And it may not be by that person or another. It may look like your husband on the news for grabbing people's asses. And you're in a public platform like this on national, tele international television. And you don't, you're not, you're not thinking that that's going to happen to you. You're not thinking that you did all of these things to these women getting into their business. You don't think that that is going to happen to you girl are you crazy and then for you to behave in a way like they should treat you in a way that you couldn't even extend to them you want something from them you couldn't even give to them in the time that they were in their grieving or grief moments or shame moments now you want some empathy Ashley get your ass out of here with all of that bullshit don't nobody care about you and your husband don't nobody care nobody you don't you're not gonna get what you didn't give period and that's just what it is so i'm out of here y'all and we're gonna come back with part three i guess the husbands are gonna come back and we're gonna see what's gonna happen y'all let me know what y'all think i'm sure i missed some things i was kind of all over the place reading my tweets but you know trying to keep the sun out my face and everything but anyways y'all have a wonderful day take care of each other and protect your energy peace